getting to the point of this video series. It is 6.15 now. I'm done with my supper. Had some hearty chili. And when I eat chili, I like to have, uh, or I should say when I eat cheese and crackers, I like to have a little chili with it. <laughs> um, so that was that. That was good. Lexi and the baby are gone to uh, her friend's house. Uh, we're here today for part three. Hey, I got my, my fingers up. That's pretty good. <laughs> Part three of the Emerson boombox, and I, I'm calling it a boombox because it's AM, FM with a cassette, and it just doesn't have two speakers. It's not a stereo boombox, but it is a boombox. So uh, that's that. We got in the first uh, two parts, we um, took a look at it inside and everything, and then found out what the problem was, fixed the problem, <clears throat> and uh, so that's where we're at with that. On this part, we are actually getting to the collaboration between Bob and I. You all know Bob. So, uh, after I do this little intro here, we will go to directly to his portion of the video where he will explain what we are trying to do. And once he is finished, then I will come back and show you where I think will be the best spot for this. Um, that's the plan. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Um, probably won't do any of the work uh, on this video. Basically, we're just going to explain how this is done and uh, what parts to use, things like that. Um, the uh, I will put a link in the description for the jack that we used for this. And this is a switched jack. <clears throat> for those who don't know what that is, it means that uh, if there's nothing plugged into the jack itself, the uh, the circuit is completed um, internally. In other words, uh, it would be just as if um, there was nothing, you know, a jack there even there at all. So uh, that's the way that works. And as soon as you plug a jack into it, it takes the input from that jack, disconnects you from the original source, and we go from there. So Bob's going to explain that better than I did, but, you know, that's that. So let's get on to Bob's explanation, and then we'll come back with a, a look at the boombox itself and see where I think the best place to put this is. Stay tuned. Okay, going along with the project that Doug and I are co collaborating on, um, adding an aux port to almost anything, there's three things we want to do. Uh, one is do no harm. The unit should work just like it originally did when we're done. Two, the volume control should still function for the aux input. Uh, that gives you the uh, possibility of controlling the volume either with the volume control on the unit by turning up your mp3 player whatever your audio source is and then controlling the volume with the volume control on the unit or it gives you the option of turning the volume up on the unit and controlling the volume from your from your source like if you want to take and control it from your phone uh, after you get it going and the other thing like everything else in life is you know keep it simple you know you don't do anything any more elaborate than what you have to do. Now the actual connections that we're looking to make are here. We're using a stereo jack because most sources are going to be stereo even though the uh, uh, boombox is, uh, is mono we're going to be feeding it with a stereo source, so it's just simpler to take and use a stereo jack on it. And we're tying the, uh, you know, right and left channels together. Now, if you look at the at the uh, jack, just like, you know, like earphone jacks are, are made the same way or whatever, uh, there's a switch inside. 
when you take and press it in, it takes and opens the switch. So in this case here, if you look at this, when nothing's plugged into it, the uh, signal is going to come from the original source down to the switch through SN1, TN1. The switches are closed, so it's just going to go right back out through S1 and T1 to the volume control. When you take and you plug the earphone jack in, it's going to take and open up the switch, which disconnects your original source, and it takes the, your uh, input from the uh, from your aux uh, into the volume control. So it, it nice and simple that way you don't have to you don't have any switches that you have to take and flip on the unit itself. And it keeps you from uh, possibly damaging your original unit by feeding a signal backwards, uh, you know, through the uh, uh, either tape player or uh, receiver. Now looking over the uh, printed circuit board that Doug took and uh, sent me a picture of. Um, this is the connection on the volume control and uh, between those two points there there's a single trace and you see I have a cut here if we take and we cut that trace there then we can take and uh, attach a wire to the uh, one terminal there where it says to the jack and on the other side from the jack and that way we really haven't heard anything. If you wanted to take and restore it to original, you know, in the end, you could just take and either jumper across the, the trace or put a jumper wire uh, across those two terminals and you'd be right back where you were. It's minim minimally invasive to the original circuit. Okay, then all we have to do is mount the jack which uh, Doug will be going over because he has the unit there so he knows where there's room to take and mount it. And then wiring it according to, you know, the original, you know, to our original plans there. You can take and see the um, two switched pins there are the ones that are going to be coming, you know, from the uh, tape unit the uh, radio output unit. The unswitched ones, the ones that are labeled right and left, are the ones that will be going to the high side of the volume control. And then that single separate pin there uh, with yellow common, that'll be your ground, you know, going to ground to take and complete your circuits. And you you would use the the same basic philosophy uh, for anything you know that you're taking and trying to convert over. Now, if it was a stereo, of course, you wouldn't be combining the two. You'd just be taking and running uh, wires to the uh, right pot and to the left pot from the appropriate connectors to, in order to maintain the stereo. But otherwise, it would be exactly the same. So as you can see, it's really rather simple. And now back to Doug. All right, this part we're going to have the um, a look at exactly where I think is a good spot because of the locations of uh, the circuit board and things like that. And I probably this will probably be the second part of this, but I, I just wanted to to kind of show you. Um, <clears throat> up in this area here is our, our volume control and this is the high side right here and uh, this little trace here is the one and you won't you're not be able to see it I'll, I'll bring you back for a better closer look but that's the circuit or the uh, trace that has to be cut and these are the two points that we need to connect to uh, so I thought at first up here on top but there's just too much going on up there uh, if we look at it uh, by the time you put that up there where it goes, there's not much room left. Now, at the same time, I'm trying to get this in here a little bit better. There we go. That's how it fits in there like that. And as you can see, 
there's not a lot of room there and these jacks I'll show you here in a second if I can do this one-handed these jacks are rather large now these jacks were chosen two reasons one is the fact that they have a screw-on um, mounting in other words you can mount this on a panel uh, uh, you know a, a PC board or you can mount it on on you know with this and then you know add that for your thing and that's what I chose these for and these are the uh, again, again the same ones in the link that I'm going to put in this video they're am from Amazon I think they're $6.99 for 10 of them and uh, <clears throat> they are switched and that's what you need so that's that and now uh, if we look again up here let me bring this up a little bit to you this area here is wide open there's not much there now down in here is the uh, battery compartment you'll see on the back here back side here and shortly but uh, that's you know and the only thing that really connects here is the blue wire connects to the antenna on the back and uh, like I said that's the only thing really is in this area there's, there's plenty of room for this and the way I'm gonna mount it I'll show you that later but it's basically gonna be mounted like that on the back side and again plenty of room there to do that and I'll show you that now I'll put this out over the other side now if we flip this around because this is going to be this side now with this this is the area I'm talking about right here this area here is going to be a good space to put this we'll basically drill our hole in the side there mount this that flat against the thing so it mounts in there now this thick as this uh, plastic is uh, we'll have to uh, bring down the uh, there see so that's about it's, it's going to be be up there and we'll have to bring down the uh, uh, do a cutout for the uh, little chrome nut to fit into and that won't be difficult to do at all either I will show you that once I get it done but basically like I said it's going to be mounted that way but but flat against that and all our wires will come off of this there's only going to be actually two wires coming off of this and that should be plenty of room now I can I can do this uh, you know another way this is our connection for the antenna that I was speaking of the blue wire we can take this down here if we want and I'm, I'm thinking about that because it's actually a little bit more room that way and set it right there there's no problem there with anything that's just the negative well actually it's just not the negative yeah, I guess it is a negative but anyway that's just the uh, from the uh, batteries and as long as there's no connection there it shouldn't be a problem so I'm thinking that's probably the best place to put it and that may be where we go so um, it remains to be seen like I say I, I'm gonna gonna work this out in my head I guess is the best way to put it but uh, <laughs> and that may take a while uh, but anyway that's flat up against or that's flat against there's a, a lip here that's flat against that lip and like I say that should give it a little more support when it's drawn through there and there's plenty of room for the wires like I said there's only two wires that come off there two of these will two terminals on uh, two four of these will be tied together for to make our mono signal out of the stereo jack and like Bob said um, it uh, needs to be stereo because most of your oh well, you know your Bluetooth is going to be stereo and then your your uh, anything you plug into an aux jack is generally going to be stereo so you you really want that to be you know if you don't do it that way then you end up with the left or right channel whichever it, it connects to and it just doesn't sound as good I don't think you guys may disagree and you may go a different route I don't know I'm just telling you how I think about it and Bob agrees with me that it does need to be stereo and we can combine those into mono and then you get all the uh, music out of it that way and that's gonna be good so the uh, like I said that's basically what we're gonna do here and and there's plenty of room here on the as you've seen on the, the front part of the uh, uh, circuit and in this back part there's plenty is plenty of room as well so I think that will work out rather well happy about that uh, hardest part is gonna be getting that hole drilled just in the exact spot that I want it and it won't be impossible also uh, basically what I'm going to do is drill a hole the size of the uh, threaded portion of the jack and then draw drill after that I'll drill a, with a larger drill drill a hole uh, down into it just a little ways 
to uh, attach this to to where it uh, it connects. There's just going to be a thin piece of plastic in there, probably uh, we'll say uh, about that thick between where the chrome nut is and the base of the uh, jack. So about that thick is where the actual stuff that will hold the uh, thing on, and it will it will work out just fine. Trust me, I, I know I've done this before, and they they work out really nice. So, but this is how you do it. Uh, I think Percain was most interested in, in this uh, particular um, thing, and so I hope that explained it. Let, let's take a closer look at this. I promised that, and I forgot. Um, this is again the um, get you as close as we can here, and there you go. This one here is the high side of the uh, volume control. This is the wiper, and this is the low side. Now this this trace here comes across here just like this and goes to this point here. And at first we were trying to find a, a component that mounted here and then go from there, but it's just much easier to cut this trace out. And the only thing you have to worry about is is once you cut this trace, it don't matter if it's just a, a, a slight section or a larger section, it doesn't matter as long as there's no longer any connectivity between these two points. That's the only thing you're after when you cut that trace. So if you've accomplished that, you've accomplished your mission. And again, we'll just solder our new wires to this point, to this point where there's already solder there. And everything should be hunky-dory. So that's how that's going to work. And again, that's uh, when you do that, that will, that will allow your uh, tape source and your radio and internal uh, devices, you know, in the boombox to operate normally. Obviously... Uh, when you flip this switch up here, which I don't know if I can get to it or not, but the uh, tape, this tape, um, the radio and tape switch, whatever position it's in, there's nothing going to happen there. Uh, I, I think it would be, be best to put it in the tape position because that way your, your uh, radio is not playing into nothing. It won't hurt anything to do that. But it's just it's just wasteful. I mean, you know, if you put it in tape, and you're obviously not trying to listen to a tape, then it will work just fine. There's no other draws on the electricity and like that. You're, in other words, if you're using battery or something like that, it will work better. So again, uh, my suggestion is to to leave it in tape whenever you do use the aux jack. That way, there's no excess or no extra draw of the electricity, and that should work rather well. Um, now, in, in, the, in the next video, I'm going to show you again the completed um, design of this, and we'll, we'll take it, we'll listen to it, and see how it sounds, um, and that's going to complete this series of the uh, uh, adding Bluetooth or aux port, whatever you want to call it, to this boombox. Um, I may do some more video on this at a later date. Uh, one thing I want to do is the uh, belt on the uh, tape transport. I, I promised uh, Percane I would try to show him how to cut a new belt for that and, and uh, put together a new belt for that because he said he can't find none and uh, once we get the old one off and get a measurement then we can uh, try to find one that way and uh, you know I may have better luck than he does. He says he has some problems up in Canada finding things so we'll try it and see. Uh, again, like I said, that's uh, what we're, that's that's going to be extra to this, so it's not going to be part of this. Uh, we got it working. That was that that had to be done to get this show show it uh, working with the aux port. Now the aux port, what is the aux port good for? The aux port is good for like if you have a an, just like Bob said, an MP3 player with eighth in, eighth inch cable stereo cable. You can plug that into this and use this for your your amplifier. Uh, that's all it is. This aux port, the way this is wired, the way this is set up, is no different than a stereo or any other device with an aux port. You always have your uh, volume control is independent of your volume from your uh, source, uh, be it Bluetooth or the phone or whatever you're using. Uh, you know how you can adjust the volume with it, and you can adjust the volume with this. So that's the way any of them work, and we figured this would be the best place to put this. Where it doesn't interfere with anything, there's no, um, there is absolutely no um, corruption or whatever you want to call it, uh, you know, in between 
the device in this. It's just it takes the device out of circuit and just uses the amplifier section of the uh, cassette or the boombox itself to uh, play your music, and that's all it does. So that's the easy way of doing it. And like I said, at the same time I do the aux port, we'll, we'll show you how to add the Bluetooth. The Bluetooth is not going to be any different than we just did with the uh, Kenwood. You're just basically going to have the cable, the dongle, and go from there. And that's pretty much all there is to it. So uh, this time we will actually use the cable that came with the dongle. So <laughs> that well, that much will be different. But other than that, there won't be any difference. So, All right, that's going to do me uh, on this part of it. And I want to thank Bob for his contribution to this. And who knows, he may show up again. You never can tell. <laughs> Uh, my biggest fear, or not fear, I, I really shouldn't say fear, is just uh, I try to not move this around as much as possible because every time you move these, these wires, these little tiny wires, they they uh, they tend to break off and things like that. So I've been trying not to move it as much as possible. Also, one more thing I forgot to tell you. And of course, I would, I would show you in the next one. But when I do uh, put the wires on here, there will be disconnects between here and there. In other words... There'll be a wire here with a disconnect so that the back can be removed just like it always is. And the same with this. And they will be color coded or something to where they can't be mixed up. I might even put them in one connector and, uh, you know, one that only fits one way and things like that. But there's plenty of room for all that, like I say, up in this area here and there won't be any problem with it. So, all right, you guys have a great day. Thanks so much for watching and we will see ya.